Well, the shop organization around here is, it's, it's getting there. If you haven't seen the videos for the upper shop cabinet and the lower shop cabinet, I'll link those down below. There's a free plan for each one of those. There's also a plan for the project today. All the links to all of that will be down below. Now, let's talk about what's next. I already mentioned the miter saw station, the other lower cabinets, that's all on hold. Now I wanna focus on some of the smaller tools and accessories and how to organize them. What if I build one cabinet to rule them all? Sort of a six in one multi cabinet. Probably a bad idea, but I'm still gonna build it and it's gonna be awesome. And by the way, every shirt that I wear during this project was generously provided by Into the AM, the sponsor of this video, and we're gonna talk about them a little later. All right, I've got all the pieces cut from the three quarter inch plywood. This is most of everything, the top and the bottom, the sides, some dividers. I've still got a few pieces to cut out from thinner plywood, but we'll do that a little later. What I wanna do now is put solid wood edge banding on this. I'm gonna use some red oak I've got laying around. I'm gonna rip it into half inch strips so it'll be half inch thick and three quarter inches wide to fit on the edge of this plywood. The reason I'm putting it on now is because we've got a lot of dados and rabbits to cut into these pieces and we want the edge banding to also get cut so it needs to be on before we start that. You know, we're making some good progress. I've got all the rabbits and dados cut into the three quarter inch pieces. It's all dry fit here. It only took about 17 days, so that's not bad. Now I can measure for the half inch back piece, cut it out, and then we can assemble this with glue and clamps. It didn't take 17 days, it only felt like it. Why did I say 17? That's an odd number. If you've watched a few of my videos, you may have noticed that I exclusively wear what's known as the t-shirt. I consider myself somewhat of a connoisseur of the t-shirt, a t-shirt sommelier, if you will. That's why I was so excited when Into the AM, this video sponsor, reached out, I saw their t-shirts, and I realized the perfect apparel company was combining with the perfect woodworking channel to create an unstoppable force. Into the AM does not just sell t-shirts, oh no. They've got much more going on than that. They've got hats, shorts, joggers, hoodies, and unmentionables. It's just underwear. Why can't you mention underwear? These shirts are just made of the stuff that makes you feel good. They hug you in the right places, they lay off the bad places, and trust me, I've got a few biscuits in the basket. 
Wait. Into the AM's got some really great bundle deals going on right now. You can get three of the graphic t-shirts for $60 or three of the basic t-shirts like this one with or without the logo for $49.95. If you know anything about high quality t-shirts, especially graphic t-shirts, you'll know that that's a really good deal. Now on top of that, use my code OTW10 at checkout and you'll get another 10% off. These are honestly the most comfortable t-shirts I've ever worn and add to that, They've got so much style and you're not going to find anything else like this. So I'll put a link down below so you can go get some of your own at IntoTheAM.com. I screwed up. I don't know why I do this to myself. So the chargers sit on this shelf and they're angled so you can plug the batteries in. All that's good. But their cords are supposed to wrap around back here in this dead space and there's gonna be a power strip back there. And then my idea is, since there's an outlet directly below where this is gonna be on the wall, was to run the cord for the power strip down through the bottom. So I'd have to drill through all of these shelves. The problem is last night, I got ahead of myself and put the back on. So now I don't have access to all of that. And it's really not that big of a deal to get the power strip in here because I've got a Forstner bit plenty of big enough. I'm gonna drill a hole right above that shelf Ah, oh, but it's just irritating. So my one other option is to drill the hole on the side, and that side will not be visible when you come out into the shop. It'll only be visible when you're on this side of the shop. So that's not that often. I don't know. I don't know which way I'm gonna go yet. I guess we'll find out in a minute. I went ahead and went the direction of drilling this on the side, and I think I'm glad that this whole situation happened because I started thinking I'm gonna need access to unplug chargers and maybe replace a power strip if I need to in the future. So this access hole has to happen anyway. If you put it in the back, you really can't run the power cord out the back or it's gonna be pushed up against the wall. So I think you probably need to do it this way. Now you could drill a hole on the back as your access and then still drill holes in these shells and run it out the bottom if you needed to, but then you're gonna have to take it off of the wall to get access to the back of it. So I think this is probably the best solution. I'll put this in the plans. To make the cutouts for the table saw blades, I attach a piece of quarter inch plywood to my router. I'm using a straight bit, and then I find the direct middle of the piece I'm cutting out. I want the diameter of the cutouts to be a little over 10 inches so that the saw blades will easily fit in there. I make a mark at that desired diameter on each of the four sides, and then we want to attach the plywood base to the middle of the piece we're cutting out. So the way I did this is I cut a nail down and stick it right in the middle on that mark and then I press the plywood base down and that tells me where I need to drill the hole. And then I use a wood screw to hold that router base down and we make the cut in a clockwise direction.
What a project this was. I'll tell you what, this is my favorite project, if not ever, than in a long time. It's got so many different features on it. Got a place to put all of the drills, a little bit of storage behind that for batteries. And then we've got the two magnetic strips for putting drill bit holders and some drill bits and different things. Even a little tape measure here. We've got a drawer to put all of our different drill accessories and attachments in. The chargers are up here, very accessible. Just slide a battery on and off. It's got these amazing little trays for our table saw blades. I got this from Wood Magazine, a video that they did. I believe that's where that came from. Just a great idea to store your table saw blades. Pretty easy to make with the router. I've got a little pull out divider here. You could glue this in place if you wanted to or just leave it out all together. I installed this dowel to put our dado blades so we got all of that accessible. Don't have to take apart the little case anymore to get to the different parts. They're all just right there. These sandpaper trays are also such a great idea. Very easy to make. And I don't remember where I got this idea from, but I did see it somewhere. If I come across that, I'll put it down in the description. Also got a little cubby here to put the palm sanders. If you like this cabinet and you wanna build it yourself, I've got a plan, link to that is down below. Don't forget, intotheam.com, I've got a link to their site down below. and get hats, shorts, underwear, hoodies, pants, they've got all kinds of stuff over there. Use code OTW10 at checkout to save 10 more percent on top of your order. Again, link to that is down below. Watch one of these videos next. I'll see you over there.